Hey guys, welcome once again. It's been a long time, right? Well, this time we are going to see the design of different and newly invented DC to DC converter. Earlier we have seen the design of buck converter, boost converter, flyback converter and a push pull converter, which are either step up or step down converter. Now, let's take an example. What if we have to design a DC to DC converter where we have input voltage in the range of 25 to 35 volts and output voltage should be constant which is 30 volts. So for this configuration, we need a converter which will step up the input voltage and also step it down as the voltage exceeds. And there are converter topologies which can satisfy these needs such as bug boost converter, cook converter, flyback converter and sepik converter that is single ended primary inductance converter which is the one we are going to design this time. Well, there are several advantages of this converter over traditional bug boost converters and flyback converters. First is the active switch that is control switch is in the parallel with the load. So to switch this component becomes easier. Second, unlike bug boost converter, it gives non-inverting output. Third, due to this capacitor in parallel, an isolation is present between input and output. This converter contains input capacitor, output capacitor, two inductors, a coupling capacitor, a control switch that is a transistor and an uncontrolled switch that is diode. Instead of using two different inductors, we can use coupled inductors wounded around one core itself. However, coupled inductor design gives better efficiency of the converter than uncoupled ones. But for easy understanding, we'll design the converter with uncoupled inductors in this video. The input capacitor is connected to one terminal of the L1A. Another terminal of the L1A is connected to drain of the Q1 if it is a MOSFET. The same terminals are connected to capacitor CP. Second terminal of the CP is connected to L1B. And these are connected to anode of diode D1. Cathode of the D2 is connected to output capacitor. A PWM signal is given to gate of the Q1 and remaining terminals of the components should be grounded. This is the basic topology of the SEPIC converter. Now we will divide the operation of the converter into different steps. That is when the active switch is on and when the active switch is turned off and its effect on the circuit to ease down the complications. Simultaneously, we'll follow the waveforms of current and voltage at every stage for better understanding. First state, initially when we turn on the input supply at time T0 and at the input capacitance charges up to V in, due to the capacitor CP in series, it blocks the pure DC in preceding branch and circuit becomes open. Hence, there is no output voltage in this cycle. At time T1, Q1 is turned on. The input capacitors get discharged through this path. And it will charge the inductor with polarity shown in the figure. It will charge up to peak current and remaining circuit will stay as it is due to the same reason. Now Q1 is turned off at time T2. Input capacitance gets charged and due to change in current, the flyback voltage of value L into DI by DT is induced inside the inductor. Now the voltage across Q1 is L into DI by DT plus input voltage. And at this case, capacitor CP starts charging. As this voltage is not purely DC, the current flows through capacitor and diode D1 becomes forward biased. And current flows through output capacitor C out and it starts charging and we get the output voltage that is V out is equal to L into DI by DT plus input voltage if V out expected is greater than V in. Now, switch Q1 is again turned on at time T3. Inductor L1A starts charging due to input capacitor and L1B starts charging due to CP. So these capacitors and inductors are aligned to each other. Due to the discharging of CP, diode becomes reverse biased, the output capacitor discharges and the load gets continuous supply. Now at the next step, when the active switch is turned off, 
the inductor L1A and L1B start charging coupling capacitor and output capacitor respectively. That is L1A starts charging CP and L1B starts charging C out and simultaneously it gives output to the load. These above steps will keep repeating to regulate the output voltage. An output voltage depends on the duty cycle of the converter. If the output voltage has to be greater than the input voltage, then the required DT cycle gets more than 50%. If the output voltage has to be less than input voltage, then the required DT cycle gets less than 50%. There is one more advantage of SEPI converter where the power is drawn from the input and simultaneously delivered to the output, same as that of an auto transformer. Hence the active switch does not have to handle the entire power transfer. Due to that, the circuit becomes more efficient compared to the other step up and step down converters. If you guys want to discuss about the advantages of coupled inductor design, please let me know in the comment section. Well, this is the first step of design that is topology selection. Next time we'll design an example of the SEPIC converter and its working simulation. For that, stay tuned and if you have any questions, you may ask in comment sections and hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you'll get the updates about my new videos. Watch my previous videos if you have any interest in technology and I'm sure you'll definitely find some interesting information. And finally, thanks for watching.